everyone and welcome to Book Days. Today's adventure has brought us to Dinosaur Valley State Park here in Glen Rose, Texas. And today we are going to be learning all about the dinosaurs. I am so excited to show off this gem in the heart of Texas. Let's take a look. The book of the day is Edwina, the dinosaur that didn't know she was extinct by Mo Williams. So I'm here today with Ranger Allen. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, absolutely. Thank you all for coming out here to the park. This is actually my first time here in Dinosaur Valley State Park, and I've always wanted to come, and Book Days gave me a reason to show it off to you guys. So as you come into the park, um, you will see two models of dinosaurs. Alan, can you talk a little about these dinosaurs and um, how they relate to the park? Absolutely. So we have two dinosaur models here. Our T-Rex, we named Rex, and our Brontosaurus that we named Bronto. Now both of these dinosaurs are from the 1964 to 1965 New York World's Fair in New York City. What these dinosaurs actually show is that our dinosaur tracks that were actually in the river here in the park are very related to these two dinosaurs right here. So while these two species aren't the ones that made our tracks, they're very distant cousins to the ones that actually did. So these models were donated to the park in 1970 after we became a Texas state park. And they're there with a smile on their face, ready to greet every visitor coming into our park. I love it. It really just creates the whole atmosphere for this park. So let's go see some tracks. So we're getting close to the river and the tracks. I'm excited. So we're here at the tracks. <laughs> Can you tell me more about this? I'm super excited. Absolutely. So we're here at the main track site in the park. This is one of the most popular track sites here in the park. Um, what you're looking at here, the three-toed dinosaur tracks that y'all see is Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus is a 10 to 15 foot tall dinosaur and weighed about seven tons as it walked around. Wow. Um, very similar to T-Rex. It was a carnivore as well. Right. And it was also the apex predator. At that time, it was the top of the food chain. Would not want yeah. to be here when that was around. No, nope, not really. <laughs> Right. The other trend dinosaur tracks that y'all see, kind of where this uh, bush that comes over the water is, there's an indention there in the rock. And then following it back, there's a triangular shaped track near some of the Acrocanthosaurus. And then there's an upside down heart looking track up there as well. I see that. Right. So the upside down heart is the front foot and the other two previous tracks are the back feet. And that's Sore Poseidon. So our Poseidon, that's that herbivore. It's a very similar to Brontosaurus that we looked at earlier. And that's a 60 foot tall, 44 ton dinosaur that walked around. Wow. Um, kind of put that dinosaur in perspective. Um, on the top side of this cliff right here, there's a hiking trail called our mm -hmm. limestone ledge. If that dinosaur was here today, so our Poseidon would be able to stand in the river, look over those trees and see you walking down that hiking trail. Um, and it was the Gulf of Mexico came all the way up to here. And we sit on the edge of that coastline today. Um, but unfortunately, with that, we don't have salt water. We have the river. Yes. Right? And so with our tracks here, they were walking around in a muddy, swampy beach. So when they stepped in the mud, they left their imprint behind. And then as the water brought in different layers of mud and sediment, it covered up those tracks, hardened that with the weight, mm -hmm. and protected them, turned them into all the limestone that y'all see today. That is you guys have to check this out. So Alan, uh, you just described how the tracks were preserved. Well, why are there so few tracks here and in the world that we can actually see today? Right, there, we do have a lot of tracks here at the state park. We have over 10 track sites here alone. But unfortunately, one of the things that we begin to see is the river actually is destroying our tracks, oh. right? When the river floods from rain, as it is now, unfortunately, <laughs> the river is actually gonna rise. And what that actually does is it actually creates an inflow of water going into this track site specifically that's normally not there. Mm -hmm. And therefore the tracks are not used to it. So they actually start to get worn down over time. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that we see to go is that depth that you see, that hole that the, mm -hmm. the dinosaurs left, yeah. and eventually the track just goes away. So that's one of the reasons why that we're seeing so few of them here in the park. And what, how heavy would a dinosaur have to be to leave these kind of tracks behind? They would have to be pretty big in order to leave their dinosaur tracks behind like this and some of the depths. Mm -hmm. Some of these holes that y'all see for like Sora Poseidon, they're actually deeper than they look. You're looking at a dinosaur track, if you stand in it, it would probably be about this far deep. 
in the grounds, even right here that you're looking at. They do, they're they deeper than they look because Thor Poseidon weighed 44 tons. Acrocanthosaurus weighed seven tons. So regardless of their weight, those dinosaurs were still able to leave a deep impression, deeper than we can actually leave if we were to step in the mud today. Yes. So how many elephants would that be? I know we count tons in like elephants. So for the kids sake, how many elephants would that be weight wise? So you're looking at probably for a Sora Poseidon, elephants probably about a ton or so, mm -hmm. uh, 44 tons. So it's about 44 elephants. 44 right? For elephants. one dinosaur. Yeah. Wow. wow. Crazy. So just down the river from the main track site, uh, we are here at the RT bird site. And Alan, can you describe a little bit about what this site is all about? Absolutely. So this RT bird site right here is technically an excavation site. Mm -hmm. um, here at Dinosaur Valley, we not only protect the tracks, but the historical side of our tracks as well. Yeah. And so with that, this site right here is actually known for them actually removing the track layer from the river before we were a state park. They did this during the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Mm -hmm. Took them a while to dig out dinosaur tracks because they had to do it by hand. They didn't have much of the equipment that we have today, right? So when they dug out these tracks, they actually were going to put them in museums because these tracks were world famous for how much detail and being some of the first discovered in this area, they were wanting these to be put in museums. Yeah. So the American Museum of Natural History in New York City mm -hmm. and the Texas Memorial Museum down in Austin is the other location that some of our tracks actually went to. Very cool. Uh, what dinosaurs made the tracks in this site? So this site was still Acrocanthosaurus and Sora Poseidon, as we saw at the main track site. Okay. Um, all of our sites, those are the two species that you'll see at most of our track sites here in the park. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what they removed from here because some of the world's first that they had ever discovered for those tracks. And so they wanted to put them somewhere else. Um, why are those the only two dinosaurs found in this park compared to maybe like the T-Rex or some of the other dinosaur species? Right. And the reason being is that the level where we are geologically, like mm -hmm. where the rock layer actually is, that's where we're at with those dinosaurs right now. The layer that we're actually standing on right now, you'll mm -hmm. notice is about two feet higher than the river. Yes. There's tracks underneath our feet right now that we have never seen before. And who knows what species are actually underneath this rock layer, whether it is a T-Rex or Velociraptor or Brontosaurus or more of our Acrocanthosaurus and Sora Poseidon. We don't know. That's the exciting part. The river is going to expose those tracks over time. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Um, have y'all ever touched old dinosaur tracks? No, we have not. <laughs> so what, what we do with our tracks, we keep them very clean. We try to maintain them as well as we can. So we definitely keep it easy and safe when we touch our dinosaur tracks. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we like to do is definitely just kind of measure your hands in the track as well. And you can even just kind of gently touch the edge of the tracks. And you can actually see the detail and actually feel some of the foot pads in some of the tracks as well. So feel free. Let's see. My hands are kind of small, but <laughs> wow. The, the, uh, the detail, like you mentioned, is just like insane um, that it left behind. I mean, look how it's so pointed right mm -hmm. there left the detail of their toes how defined they yeah. actually are and that's why we that's why we like to claim we have some of the best dinosaur tracks ever just because of their detail yeah that's so cool it's like putting your hand like back in time history right. coming to life absolutely it's your turn That is so amazing. So would this be a normal uh, stride for a dinosaur? I see all kinds of tracks kind of here in a sequence. Absolutely. So these Acrocanthosaurus tracks you're all looking at right there, that actually is starting the, the left foot right there, coming up to the right foot specifically, and up to the other left foot up there for that. And it's one single dinosaur, and it's a trackway. So yeah. trackways for us are where a dinosaur, we can follow one single dinosaur in one direction for two or more steps. Mm. And we have tons of trackways all over the park, and this is one of the most popular ones right here. I can literally envision the dinosaur going like, it's pretty wild. Can you tell me why this is called the dinosaur capital of Texas? Absolutely. So here, Glen Rose is known as a dinosaur capital of Texas because we have some of the largest collection of dinosaur tracks in their natural environment right here in the river. And so we first discovered Sora Poseidon tracks right here, the ones we were looking at. And so with that being the world's first and having discovered a lot of different dinosaur species, Glen Rose really built up on the foundation of the dinosaur tracks in this area.
very interesting. We used to say that this was a hidden gem, but we're not hidden anymore because we get on average several hundreds of thousands of people wow. to visit our park a year because they want to come back, some for the first time, and some that want to come back every month because they absolutely love this park. I love it. It was amazing. I learned a lot. And also, why is it called the Valley? So Dinosaur Valley got its name. The first part was from our dinosaur mm -hmm. tracks. We have to put dinosaur in the name, it's very fitting. But then also this park actually sits in a huge valley of this area. So back then this ocean actually came through and now as uplift occurred, it actually created this valley where you can see the hills right here behind us and these tall prairie grasses. We now sit in the valley. So Dinosaur Valley was a very fitting name for this area in this it park. It is. I mean, the grass, I think like a dinosaur is gonna come out right now because of it. <laughs> We are here at the museum here at Dinosaur Valley State Park and Alan, I see some amazing tracks models here in the museum. Can you speak a little bit about these tracks here? Absolutely. So these are models of tracks that we have out in the river today. Um, what we actually, that's unique about this area is we can actually look at the foot structures for our two dinosaur species, for Sauropocidin and on the other side, Acrocanthosaurus. Um, what these models and these foot structures actually show us is essentially how big the skeleton actually is for these dinosaurs and just how big not only their foot is, but just in comparison, how big that dinosaur actually is in order to make those deep impressions that we see today out there in the river. I love that you guys have models of what the feet actually look like because all the dinosaurs are so different and sometimes it's kind of hard to imagine exactly what the feet look like. Um, so I love how um, this one is a little bit different than that one. The bone structure is definitely different and kind of brings the tracks that we saw down the river all that much more to life. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it definitely brings them to life, definitely showcases. I mean, you can see just how big their skeleton actually is. And when you think about, for a sore beside, there's three other feet that are about that big. And can you think about the body and the neck and the, and the tail? That's a huge dinosaur that walked around. No doubt, wow. So I love the pictures that you guys have here at the Sword Poseidon and walking in the riverbed. I think it's a great uh, model to show the kids exactly how deep their legs were in the river and then how big their bodies actually were outside the river. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Um, so when they were walking around on the coastline here, um, the water level for the ocean at that point in time was actually about seven or eight feet deep. So for most of us, that would have been way over our head. We wouldn't be able to touch the bottom. But for Sora Poseidon here, that came up to their knee. Right? That kind of paints just how tall that dinosaur is. And that's what this picture showcases is for an adult Sora Poseidon here in the middle, you see it just comes up just right above their knee, almost halfway up their leg. And for the juveniles, the children, it almost covers them up, but they can still walk around. Their head is still out of the water. Kind of paints in just how tall this dinosaur actually is. No doubt. So, Alan, here at Dinosaur Valley State Park, we're not going to see any rare dinosaurs that didn't know they were extinct? Fortunately not. <laughs> It'd be cool if we did, but we have T-Rex and Bronto, our brontosaurus, out there as well. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for this special book day episode at Dinosaur Valley State Park. Ranger Allen, thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you all for coming out to the park and sharing our history and our dinosaur tracks with the rest of the world. It was so exciting to see these real dinosaur tracks. You have got to come out to this state park. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. We'll see you soon. Bye. Want more book days? Well, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. Here are some other options that you may enjoy.